And as I always like to say, when you come on, weenie, weedy, weechy. <laughs> I know you say that every time. <laughs> I say that every time. I'm the only person you know that study Latin. <laughs> you are the only other person I know who speaks Latin. You must have a, a Roman soldier in your neighborhood you get to practice with. How funny. How funny. Let and for those who can... don't speak Latin, which is everybody except me and <laughs> Melissa, that means I came, I saw, I conquered, which is a great way to approach the stock market, actually. Uh, the Stock Swoosh LLC is an educational firm that empowers traders with a complete and detailed system to become profitable traders. <laughs> Melissa Armo graduated magna cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy and a minor in Latin and political science in 1994. She was employed for several banks and brokers in New York, uh, Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She has changed careers from banking to pursue a security trading career in 2008. A self-taught day trader with over 10 years experience, uh, Melissa specializes in a trading strategy to focus on shorting stocks that gap. Uh, Melissa also appears frequently as a uh, TV commentator and stock market expert. Watch Melissa on RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, uh, and Fox Business News. Uh, okay, Melissa. Well, you know the 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 drill here. Uh, you have until five minutes before the hour, and then we will hand out the next batch of hundred thousand dollars in prizes. And you can communicate, ask questions with Melissa in the chat box on the right. So I see here, earn money fast shorting stocks. Uh, so I'm going to mute myself, Melissa, and you have the floor. Wonderful. Thanks so much for having me. Great day to be here. Great day to be inside here in Manhattan. We're getting snow. We've hardly had any snow in the Northeast this year, but it is a cold, chilly day here in New York. And, um, and I'm going to talk to you today about shorting, which is actually a great topic. So the market's rallying today. Market's up today. Market was up pretty big in a gap up. And for those of you that don't know me, I trade gaps. So I've been doing this now for 15 years. And uh, it seems like I've always traded forever, but we live in very interesting times where the market's been very volatile lately. So we're going to talk today about day trading. We're going to talk about shorts. We're also going to talk about doing options as puts. But overall, there's been a very interesting last couple of days in the market. And obviously, if you've been following the news and following what's happening in the U.S. banking system, we can talk about that a little bit at the end if we have time as well. So welcome everyone. I'm going to talk today about earning money fast shorting stocks. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. I also am on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Skype. And I try to put what I know ahead of time that I'm going to be on TV, my hits then on Twitter. So I was on Fox News, interestingly enough, on Fox and Friends on Wednesday morning, and I did talk about the possibility that the market could fall again later that week. That was after the sell-off that we saw on Tuesday. And of course, then the market tanked on Thursday and Friday. So it was good timing that I was on. Of course, there are many, many reasons that the market has been selling off the last few weeks. Despite the rally today, the Fed is going to make a rate decision next week. Many people, one of the reasons we're rallying today is because the, they think that the Fed on bad economic data this morning is not going to raise rates. I do not, that's not my opinion. Okay, my opinion is that they will raise rates next week. So if we're living in times right now where every time anyone says anything, everybody wants to grab hold of it if, in fact, that's your bias, okay? So you can have a short bias, you can have a long bias, and it's important to understand why you would have a particular bias when you put money on, when you risk money in a trade, okay? So 2022 was a great year to short. I mean, it just was. And if you didn't short the market as an active trader last year, you lost money. You didn't win. It was impossible to. The market fell literally from the beginning of January, and most stocks, even big stocks, even huge companies that are not going to go under, they still sold off in the year of 2022. So you've got to know how to short because what if we have another year like that? And we could, you know, we very, very well could. So you have to know how to short. You have to know what to short. You have to know when to short. And again, you can do an equity trade as a short where you're taking the trade on margin, which is what I do in my live room. Today we shorted UAL. You can take a look at that chart. I didn't have time to put that in today. 
It worked. It fell. Okay. It was a gap down that sold off today in the morning into the open. And you can do puts. Okay. Now, I was listening to the previous person talk about options. I do. The very thing that he was talking about, I absolutely do directional puts. So I will buy a put, flat out buy it, put, trading it on momentum, and then I will sell it. So I buy calls and buy puts. I'm doing directional trading. I am trading based on momentum, and that is what I do. So I have a method that helps me determine in the pre-market whether or not I want to do a trade in a stock or the market as a directional trade, but that is exactly how I trade. So you can buy puts in small accounts. You can open up an options account with as little as $2,000. You can buy puts in an account that is not set up as a margin account. So options are a way for people to make money without having to set up an options account, which is a retail uh, retail trader. You need 25000 in the U.S. unless you go prop, okay? And there's many, many prop places out there as well. But, you know, we're going to talk about day trades and options today and shorting. I just want to show the results from last year. Um, you know, we had really, really good results in the room last year. Again, like I said, it was a good year to short. So this is an average risk of $2,800 per trade. That's not the cost of the positions that I took. That is the cost where I took the trade, took the size, put the stop in, and if I had lost in some of the trades, which I did in, this, in these results, I would have earned roughly $2,800. But that's not the cost of the position. These are day trades on margin. But it was a good year, okay? And some of the trades we did long, but most of these trades are short. So our totals for last year for 2022 were over 651,000, and again, this is just day trades. I did options as well. I did not put those results in here. The bottom line is that anytime you want to decide to trade, anytime you want to respond in the market, and I don't care how you do it, as a swing trade, an option, whatever, okay, nothing that you do is doesn't come without risk. So people always want to protect themselves. Well, let me do this because there's less risk in doing this. Really? There's risk in everything. And if there's, there's a lot of takeaways from what happened with the Silicon Valley Bank failure in the last couple of days. One of the takeaways is, and again, if you get nothing out of my lecture today, you should get this. One of the takeaways is every trade that you take has risk. So you better know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing and you're taking trades haphazardly, going to free trading room trials, or taking advice from people that you don't know, you have no idea who they are, or just listening to stuff on TV, you're taking risk. For, for the sake of just taking the risk, okay? Nothing in life that comes without taking chances or risk to win big, but you have to assess the risk. So there's a difference between risk and for risk sake and calculated risk. So what happened with the failure of SVB VB Bank? They took risk that they should not have taken, okay? They had poor risk management. So the bank went under. Again, there's a lot of reasons for that. And I don't know if we're time, we'll full have time more at the end to talk about it, but they bought long-term bonds, okay? So at the time, whenever they purchased those long-term bonds, interest rates were going down, okay? The interest rates had been down for a long, long time. However, in 2022, interest rates were rising. Everyone knew that. Just like I just told you earlier, five minutes ago, people think now, and the market's rallying today because they think that the Fed is gonna stop raising rates next week. That is not what I think, okay? And the reason I'm saying that is because I listen to the Fed when they talk. They want to bring inflation down. They, this is the only vehicle that they have to do it. Inflation's too high. If they stop raising rates, then inflation's going to stay where it's at, which is way too high, and everybody knows that. So again, people are buying the market today because they think something's gonna happen, which may or may not happen. So that's not what I call calculated risk, okay? You have to look at something and say, I'm gonna do this trade, I'm gonna buy something, I'm gonna short something because, this, because of this. Know why you're doing something, and you have to have definitive reasons for doing that. But you've got to take risks to make money. So one of the reasons I do trade options in the direction of the option, where I'm buying it and selling it in its direction, is because I'm calculating the risk ahead of time using a rating system that I do, that I use myself in the morning when I rate the gap in the pre-market. Before I even take a trade, before I even trade the market, before the market even opens, I'm assessing the risk. Knowing that there's a possibility that every trade I take could lose, okay, I rate my gaps using a 26-point rating system. And if it rates 20 points or more, then I'm saying the risks are high that this gap is going to go. This is going to go in my direction, again, whether long or short, but today we're talking about shorts, that it has a high 
high level of chance of working, okay? Because no one wins in every trade. No one wins in every trade, and that's also why you have to take calculated risk. What was the other reason for the failure of SVB Bank? When they realized, which they should have done, again, if they had good risk management, which they didn't, if they had good management at all, in 2022, then in fact, the, the value of the bonds that they bought were going down. <clears throat> and again, if you don't understand bonds, say you buy a bond. And you buy a bond and it costs a dollar. So what if you get up tomorrow? That bond in a, an interest rate environment where interest rates, is, for, I'm talking about long-term bonds now. If the interest rate went down, okay, that bond now that you paid a dollar for tomorrow might be worth a dollar twenty-five. You can sell that bond. You could sell it then and you'd make 25 cents. But if in a rising interest rate environment for long-term bonds, tomorrow that bond may be worth 75 cents which is fine if you don't have to sell it. But what happened with SVB Bank is that there was, there was a run in the bank where people wanted their deposits and people wanted their money out. And then they would have had to cash out the bonds, in which case the value was not there for the bonds because the interest rates had gone up so much. So last year, the, the bank should have, knowing that interest rates were on the rise, you know, cut their risk back and sold some of the bonds at a loss and taken some of the risk off. They did not do that. And many, many people, and this is one of the reasons that we rallied in January, have been saying for the last two, three months, mostly the end of 2020, 2022, that the Fed was gonna stop raising rates this year. They've said nothing, nothing whatsoever at all that, that has made anyone should have think that if they just listened to them. So what people want and what is happening is not reality. But again, we'll talk about that more later if we have time. But the takeaway is that you have to assess risk okay there is time to take risk if you want to make money you must but you can't take risk for risk sake and many people trade the market don't know what they're doing take risk for risk sake because they want to make money have no idea what they're doing don't understand the trade and they don't calculate the risk the fact that they could lose and that there's a higher chance of them losing because they don't know what they're doing or the system that they're using in fact doesn't have a high win ratio and doesn't work okay and again, I can see any questions or comments as I'm talking here. So again, another main important point from the last couple of days, if you're an active trader, if you're in the market, if you have investments in the market, long-term retirement, whatever, is that you must, you, for your own personal accounts, if you trade, and your savings, your retirement, whatever, you, know, you must consider and use proper risk management in your trades. I think a lot of times traders, they have small accounts and they tend to blow them up. They say, what the hell, you know, and they and they risk too much money. You you have to think about what you're doing when you're trading. You don't want to blow up your account. You should No one should ever risk their whole account or even half their account in, in any day, in any week, or in any position, okay? And, and also, the other takeaway that's important from this bank failure was that they had a lot of money and guess what? they went under so they so you can have a lot of money and it doesn't necessarily mean that you were going to do well as a trader you still have to know what to do you still have to have the right information you still have to have a strategy that works you still have to have risk management you have to have all those things so many people come to me and again i've been training for 15 years but teaching people for 10 they say well you know once i have more money i'll take your class once i have more money i'll trade once i have this once i have that I don't have enough money, blah, blah, blah. Listen, you can have someone that has $200,000 in a trading account and they can lose it all, okay? Because this bank had millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, all right? The fact is that they made poor decisions. You can consequently also have, okay, a positive experience and a small account, a small trading account, and make good decisions on good trades, okay, and do well and make money and grow that account. Now you might be upset that it may take you longer than you want it to take, but that's life, people, that's life. So obviously if you have money and you have a lot of money and you know what to do and you have good risk management, that's all the best case scenario to grow your account, to make money, to trade for, for as a professional trader, trade for a living, whatever you decide to do. But not everybody's in that position. But I hear too many people that are whining and complaining as traders that they don't have enough money to trade. You don't, there's no guarantee if you have a lot of money or you will do well. And you can do well if you have a small account if you use a good strategy and have good risk management, okay? Why didn't I mention my options profits? Because my profits were huge. 
I didn't actually my assistant Douglas Douglas must be on my list because he said why didn't I mention my options profits because they were huge from last year they were because because I my assistant did this and he didn't put them in the webinar that's the that's the truth uh, I you know the next step webinar I will make sure to put them in there however the risk that I take on options is more than I take on day trades so my guess is that my assistant did not put them in here because I risk an average of seven to nine thousand dollars an average of around eight thousand dollars per options trade so you would have to have a sizable account to take that risk and to show those results while there's plenty of people that trade out there that can take that risk i don't want people to think they have to take that risk we will talk about some options trades that i did that are in here where i show advanced trader results and beginner results but again you could take one contract i've been trading a long time so my risk is greater in options mainly because of the fact that i want to hold the trades overnight and i also want to take bigger positions but that's you know there, there, we can talk more about that in detail. How much should you risk for options? How much should you risk for day trades? Should you divvy it up? We can talk about that more in detail when we're at the end. But no, I don't have those results in here. But to be honest with you, we had outstanding results on the options newsletter last year. Why? Because the market fell a lot and we were doing a lot of puts, you know. And it was one of those years, and I don't want to get too off, you know, point here, that you literally could have held trades into the date of expiration that is not something that is, that is like an anomaly okay and why why was that last year things were having really good follow through actually last week we did we were in we were in the market short and last week was one of those weeks so if i had trades that were on that expired on friday i was already out of the trades that i was up in prior to friday some i held into the last day because they were down and then flipped on friday and they were positive friday Normally, I will get out of a trade if it's positive before the last day. I just think that's a good thing to do. Again, I am doing directional trades, but last week was a week where if you stayed in trades that I called the pre previous week or the Monday of last week that expired on the 10th, you could have made more money holding into the last day of the week. Why? Because we had a big sell-off on Friday. That is an anomaly and not something that I think everyone should do. Um, but... You know, the reality is that when you're when you're somebody, if you have a retirement account, say, or your account has certain restrictions, buying a put is the same thing really as shorting. So what I'm when I say I'm buying a put, for those of you that don't know about options, it's it's a short, okay. Anyways, I also called sh uh, options on Friday. Some were in the morning, Friday. Some were Friday afternoon. Those trades went Monday. Why? Because the market gapped down Monday and the stocks that we were in gapped down Monday and, and then we got out of them on Monday morning. Now the market's rallying. I'm not in, you know, any longs in the market because I want to wait and see where we go. I may change my tune and decide to go long the market, but not right now. Part of that is the reasons that I mentioned what I've been discussing in this conversation the last 10, 15 minutes. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. I'm a smart trader, thank you. Yeah, I, th I think that, again, I, I, I make trading decisions based on technicals, but I am talking today also about fundamentals because there are different environments where you can't ignore the fundamentals, and that's right now, okay? That is right now, that's the environment where, where, where we are in that, okay? And I also talk about what's going on in the economy and fundamentals on TV. But I make trading decisions based on the technicals, and we will look at some charts. Anyways, can you do well during these times when things seem crazy, when one day we're up, one day we're down, one day the whole system's collapsing, one day everything's fine? I mean, they came out today. I don't know who said it, but somebody came out today and said from uh, the Fed that they are going to insure all deposits, uninsured, insured deposits. And why did they say that? Because I don't want everybody to go out and run out and take all their money out of the banks. They don't want the whole system to collapse. And again, that's one of the reasons the market's rallying today too. But a lot of people want to trade the market, want to be successful, want to make money, and they never get there. They just give up, like I said. They get frustrated, but they're really not taking their time. They're really not thinking trades through. They're really not thinking about their risks. They're really not assessing it. You know, 
I get it that it costs money to take a class like mine or other people's too, but you're really not wasting your time or money doing that because you're setting yourself up to be successful in the future when you take the time to learn and understand something versus just, again, like I said, taking risk for the sake of taking risk. So one individual can trade the market successfully as a career if you have a dependable method. Okay, the central structure to trading results must be a strategy where you have a solid foundation that's based on accurately reading price action and technical analysis, which is what I do. So I think it's a good time of the year. Again, it's still very early in the year within halfway through March, but it's still the beginning of 2023. You can set your goals. If you have not had a good start to this year, you can set your goals. Say, I want to make this much money between now and the end of the year. I'm going to change my strategy. I'm going to change what I'm doing. Okay. It is your choice what you do. You do not have to fail as a trader. You can be successful. The problem is it, it takes work. It takes knowledge. Okay. It takes money. It takes all of these things. And a lot of people are just too short-sighted. Again, one of the nice things about trading is you can work from home. As everyone well knows, I just said, you know, I'm home here today, which is nice. It's part-time hours with full-time pay. We traded in the morning. We shorted UAL. We were done and out, and we were done before 10 a.m. And so, and I didn't do any new options today. So fast, fast trading, I think, is the name of the game for day trades in this type of environment. As far as options goes, you need to be a little patient and play them out. Sometimes I've taken trades this year that go right away. Sometimes I take trades that take 24 to 48 hours or a couple of days. But as far as day trading goes, to be successful in this environment, you've got to be in and out quick because there's too many things that can affect your trades. But that's the reality. That's, you know, that's, if that's what it is, and that is what you have to do, okay? So you have to decide what you're doing very early in the morning, which is what I do, and stick on top of it so you can get in and out quick before the Fed talks or this thing, that thing, you know, or any economic data comes out later in the morning. But it is a dream job if you work for yourself and you work from home and you have unlimited income potential. The idea of starting out with a small account and growing it should, you know, should be appealing to people. Because again, not everybody starts out right away with a lot of money. But there's no guarantee if you have a lot of money that it, you're going to do well, okay? And it's a misnomer that a lot of people think that people that are rich always make good decisions that are always conservative. That's not true. You just saw a very wealthy bank, okay, with very wealthy customers. They made risky decisions okay and when they made those decisions at the time they probably didn't think they were risking because we were in a down we were in a, a low interest rate environment but once the writing was on the wall they should have changed course and they didn't and it amounted to the downfall of the bank okay so it's very important to understand what's going on when you're reading price action you can't ignore it and again you can wait, you can stop, you can not necessarily do a trade every single day. There's times where you just step back and you say you don't want to trade. The strategy has to be there, has to be good, has to set up right. Or you can take a day where you say, I'm not going to do anything. Trading is about taking pot shots. You don't get paid in the market if you trade every day if it's nothing good. You get paid when you're smart and make good decisions and you know what you're doing. That's, that's really the name of the game. you got to know what you're doing. Okay. And again, I've been doing one strategy for 15 years. So I've become an expert in this and particularly shorting, but it's also looking at the quick, quick uh, trades that set up in the one minute chart. But for me, I've been reading the institutional money in the market. This is part of my gap strategy. And if you follow institutional money in the market, then you can make money. If you are against it, it's going to be very difficult for you to make money. Sometimes you might. Sometimes you might, but overall, you're going to lose. The key in trading is to have the consistency where you're making money more days than you're losing, okay? So think about, set your goals. Where do you want to be at the end of this year? Where do you want to be? How much money do you want to have in your trading account? How much risk do you want to have? How much money do you want to be making per week? How, you know, do you want to grow your retirement account even? Like, you want to be in a better place, a better place, Twelve, you know, uh, by December of 2023 than you are now in March, okay? So it's good to set goals, and then that will help you be patient also. So getting back to what I was saying, success in the market is about mastering a skill. So I have a skill for reading directional bias as one of the reasons that I do directionally trade options. And also, I have a skill for reading the market very fast and very quickly into the open. So the time that I focus on trading is between 9.30 and 10 a.m., and I have found that 80% of the stocks that gap make most of their moves in that quick time in the first half an hour, hour of the day. 
Now, again, you can day trade options if you want. You could almost scalp options if you want. I don't do that. I'm looking for a bigger move in options, which is why I take a larger uh, position size in options. However, you could day trade options if you want. And they just started just recently. Spy and Q daily options. They never had that before. Now that's not in that's not in every stock, but in the ETFs in the market, like the SPY, for example, well, you could look it up today. You could get an expiration date of today. What is today? The 14th. So if I had shorted the market today, which I didn't, or if I'd gone long the market today, which I didn't, and if you had if you had gone long, long the market today, you would have made money. Again, I did not do that. You could have bought calls today that expired today. That's something new. That's something new. It's something brand new. So that actually even helps people with smaller accounts to be more active. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, the big moves happened in the past, first half hour of the day, and I call them golden gaps. Now, I was talking about this earlier. This is a rating system. I coined the name. I termed it golden gap because it's like finding gold in the market where I'm looking for 26 points of the daily chart of a stock or the market. The checklist tells me what to look for in the price of the stock, and then the points predict the price direction where it's gapping. Now, I don't need 26 points to do it. I'm looking for 20 or more. That's the cutoff. 20 is still a lot of things. So if I rate a bearish gap down and it rates 22 points, for example, then I will short it, all right? It tells you where the money is flowing, where the institutional money is flowing. And why does this matter? Because again, you're only going to make money if you're on the right side of things and you know what you need to know what direction something's going to go for the position for profit. You've got to have momentum to make money as an individual trader. It's just the name of the game. You've got to get the timing right in options and you've got to get the direction right too. But you have to have momentum because things cost money. Things cost too much money and you've got to get them to move. You've got to get a dollar, two dollar moves. You've got to get these things to move. And the faster the better, obviously. Okay. Now, again, we were talking about institutional money. Institutional money is in charge of stocks and the market at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is, okay? This is what confuses people in a market that I would define, if you technically, if you said to me, I would say 2023 has been sideways. That's how I would, I would, I would describe 2023. If I was on Fox News right now and Neil Cavuto said to me, Melissa, what would you say? I'd say, Neil, we're still in an uptrend. Actually, we never broke the uptrend per way I look at charts even last year. But I'd say, Neil, we were sideways the last few the last few weeks. We were sideways since January. I did not look at the rally in January as some crazy bullish move up. And we lost it. Okay, and we lost it. And so now even today we're rallying again. Where do we go? Well, a lot of that is going to depend on what institutional money decides to do in the next coming days. All right, which is going to have to do with the Fed. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, I'm looking to play the move quick. In and out quick, fast, into the open, bing, bang, boom. And again, I get in and out, chunk it out, chunk it out, chunk it out. If the option comes the same day, okay, if the option goes the same day, I didn't do an option UAL, but if I had, I would have been out of it today before the close. So again, I, I look at something and I assess if I'm going to hold it or not. For the options I called Friday, you could have technically got out of the morning ones by the end of Friday's close. I thought that we were going to be down this week, so I held them. But I called late trades Friday afternoon, which you would have had to hold into Monday. And obviously, then that worked out. The best time of the day to trade is in the morning, into the open. That's when the big profits come in. That's when you get the momentum. That's when you get the money moves. Okay. So here's a chart here of the SPY. And just to show you, well, here it is. This is January. And now, so this is exactly how I would describe the market sideways, up and down, boop and there. That's it. That was through, not, this doesn't count today, but today we're right around here, wherever. So we're sideways this year. So everyone's screaming, oh my God, we're this, that, and the other thing, blah, blah, blah. We got very, 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 very close yesterday morning. Take it to the right, to where we opened. We almost broke where, the, where we opened on the year. I mean, we were dangerously close to that. Actually, I think we did. I think we did in the pre-market because we were down more. We were down more on, on uh, Monday morning before we open. I'll have to go back and look at that if we have time. Anyway, success and large profits come from quality, not quantity. You only need one trade a day to make money. That's it. And again, the more plays you have, the more potential for losses. So it's not about taking pot shots. It's about finding quality, 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 quality. 
So if you come and you want to learn my method, you will learn a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, how to find a gap that is going to trend in that direction, hopefully for the most part of the day. Big moves on the day, again, that's the whole point of momentum. In a short, you want a big fat red bar. In a long, like today, if you want law in the market, you want a big fat green bar. And then early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10. And then precise entries, which I teach in the class, where you're going to get the good follow through and then the good risk to reward. Um, someone's saying about options have the largest spreads or the open. How do you deal with that? You can, I, you don't have to take it right on the open. I, I Sometimes I wait five, 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 10 minutes or something. So if you get in something at 9.35 or 9.10, I mean uh, 9.40, 10 minutes after the open, you're not going to miss the trade if it's going to go. Okay, and again, we're talking about trading options for a big move. So this isn't, like you shouldn't fret yourself over 25 cents or 30 cents or 15 cents. Do you understand? That's not the whole point. The idea of momentum is not scalping. It is that you're gonna get a big move, okay? And everybody gets a different price. Sometimes I'm focused on something else and I do pay up, but if it goes my direction, I still make money anyways and I know that I'm in if I can't watch what I'm doing or if I'm on TV or something else that day or if I'm in a day trade, okay? You don't wanna take it late though, okay? You don't wanna take it like, like I have no idea what UAL is doing right now but you should not do an option in UAL right now. We're open for two hours. It fell hard this morning. It would be too late, you know what I mean? So you try to take the trades when you get them on the newsletter, you can wait five, 10 minutes. The spreads tighten up. That's just right out the gate. Same thing with day trades, actually. Same thing with day trades. Anyways, here was a, here was a day trade we did. This obviously, again, if this is, you know, you say, okay, what happened here? This was back on the 8th. So this is JPM, biggest bank of the world, actually. Uh, biggest bank of the United States. Closed here, gap down, fell off a cliff. Everyone always says, well, do you always have the best exits? No, I do my best. I make money. I sometimes have great exits, but I, I, I had a good exit today in UAL. It kept going. I had a good exit in this. I thought it kept going. So your idea is to make money. I look for the perfect pick, the perfect gap, the perfect entry. I do the best I can with exits. I try to make money, but sometimes you can't predict how far something's gonna go. And what you don't wanna do is be up money in something that have a reverse against you and you lose. So the entry in this was 135.35. This was again on the night. This was Thursday last week when all the scuttlebutt started to hit the fan. 4,000 shares, which is a big risk. This is 3,000 risk. Again, you could have taken less. I'll show you a, a smaller risk in a minute. Exit was 131.70. This is 14,600. This is a day trade. This is a trade on margin. You could have bought it as a put if you didn't have the margin to take this position size or you take less of a position size, okay? Now, less of a position size. Oh, here's a bigger chart of it. Less of a position size, you could have taken 2,000 shares, okay? Risk 1,500 and made over $7,300. That's your whole week, you know? I mean, this is a this was a great trade. So, you know, um, the bottom line is that when you're looking for something and you're and you're in it, okay, and you're doing it, the whole point, the whole idea of it is that you want to get the money move. You want to get the flush. Like if you're in a short, you want to get boom. You want to get the flush down, the sell off. Again, if you're in a long, you want to get the push up, okay? And so that's the whole idea of capturing the money move. I don't know why my system put 3.8. This was 3.9. Um... Why would I even mess with individual stock shares when I have options? That's a great question. I'll tell you exactly why. Because when I go to bed at night if, uh, and I go to bed and when the market closes at four o'clock, I know every single day where I am with my day trades. I do not every day with options. So I am so I like the certainty of doing day trades. I also like the fact that I get the fast move in the day trades. I don't always get a fast move in an option. So, I mean, I like to be active. So the activity is the day trades where I'm in and out quick. As far as options, sometimes, like I said, you have to wait. So uh, you may not, you may take a trade one day and not book money one day in an option because you have to wait for it to go. Could be, take a day, could take two, could take three. Whereas day trades, I'm in and out fast every day. I also know where I'm at. Sometimes I go to bed at night, I'm in an options trade, it's down. Then all of a sudden the next day it's up. So I go to bed, I don't know. And so, you know, these are the, there, there's pros and cons, which we can talk about more at length again at the end of doing both. But I like doing both, okay? And you also capture overnight moves with options, but you get the flexibility being in and out quick. 
and as far as the day trades. And if I pay a certain price for something in a short, if I enter a short at 135.35, whether this trade gets to 131.70 in five minutes or five hours, I'm making you know, this money. Whereas with an option, you have time expiration even on the day, even on the day. And you'll see that now more in the dailies that they're, that they're allowing in the market. But like if you take a trade, like say you got in this trade at 942, and it goes here at 330, you get out with money, and I'm just making this up as an option, the value is less. And again, I don't wanna get into a whole big long talk about options, but you have time value with options that you lose every hour actually, every hour and every day. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, what if there's no gaps of rate over 20 points, you wait for the ones that are good, it's about high odds, high odds. The stop loss is the stop loss is the risk. The stop loss is a risk. So if this trade gets stopped out, Peter's asking about the stop loss, that's how much you're gonna lose. You know, if you get dinged out a little bit more, but you're gonna be out, you're gonna be out. Again, if you don't have a stop in it at all, again, the, you know, we could talk about the whole SVB collapse, like they had zero risk management. So they should have said, well, if the bonds go down XYZ percentage in value, we will cash them out. You know, they didn't, they didn't even do that. Like, do you know what I mean? Everybody needs a stop loss. You need to have a place we can cut it. You do not want to blow up your account. And again, you think people with small accounts blow up their accounts. Guess what? People with big accounts blow up their accounts. I've heard horror stories teaching people for 10 years. I've heard it all. Just don't do that. It's well within your control. You don't have to do crazy things. You can do normal things. And you, know, you, shouldn't, have to, you shouldn't be afraid of trading options in directional bias with momentum. You got to think about what you're doing. All right, getting back to the next one here, snap, 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 snap was the eighth so this was one we did it was a short stock close here gap down fell boom okay entry was 11.30 exit was 11.02 28 cents but still big size in this lots of volume great trade you're in and out this is a stock that does not move like a dollar two dollars i mean it had this move over here this was a really big move for that day but i was happy with the profit i was happy with the money we got in and out quick and done this actually ended up continuing though it did continue further um, it did, it did, and I think it fell even the next day because then the market fell that day and the ninth. But we did a fast day trade and we're in and out of that. Now, again, you could have risked $1,500 on this. I made $1,680. That's a day. $500 a day, $1,000 a day, $1,500 a day. I'm trying to turn what I make, uh, what I risk over one for the day trades. So if I risk $3,000, I'm trying to make $3,000. If I risk $2,000, I'm trying to make $2,000. Okay. With options, if I risk $8,000, I'm happy with 50% or 80%. Go ahead. I'm sorry. John, did you say something? Are we going to say something, John? Can everybody hear me? Oh, there's Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Jeff's on after me. Anyways, we'll talk about Google. There's another one we did. We did an ad in this. Again, this was do 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 do. Okay. Oh, just testing. <laughs> no. I thought that was, I thought that was John. <laughs> Anyways, we did a play in Google here where it fell. Um, I didn't look at my time here. This was another nice trade. And again, this was one where you're looking for the flush. Okay. So again, this was Google stock close here, gap down. We did this actually in the 14th. These dates are wrong at the top here. I don't know why these dates are on here, but this trade was right in here. So this was a gap down that we shorted and we got in and out in the tail, okay? And again, if you took less of a risk, 1450, for example, you could have made 2140. So here was the day we did it. It wasn't, the, it wasn't March 1st, it was this date. Anyways, getting back to talking about large institutional money. That's how you're going to make a lot of money. That's how you're going to get the big moves. They move stocks. I'm talking about hedge funds. And again, banks. Remember, this is the whole thing. Banks invest money in, in bonds, in stocks, in the market. And gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes a gap in the first place. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick 
the correct direction to play the gap. And that's what I do in the morning when I do the rating system. I go through the whole thing and then I make a determination if I'm going to do that gap, if I'm going to short it. But gaps are an event and they create a sense of urgency. Thus an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful, okay? Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power, all right? And again, you can do this as day trades or you can do this as options or you can make decisions based on your long-term investments determining what's happening with the market. Because what if, again, they, the Fed decides to keep increasing rates? We could go into a recession. So all the people that saw the, the, the fall off in the retirement accounts at the beginning of 2022, which were nowhere near those highs, were nowhere near the highs in the market, nowhere near that. And we're more than 14 months out from that. What if we go into a recession the second part of the year? Then people's retirement accounts are going to take another hit. So the only way that we're going to move back up is what? Institutional money will buy into the market. Okay. So I look and analyze a large time frame to make trend decisions and directional decisions on the bias for the gap. I veer to the short side because you can get fast moves into the downside fast. It's called panic. How do we sell off last week like we did? Panic. You can say it was panic because of rates. You could say it was panic because of the economic collapse of the banking sector. You can, you can say this, say that. Actually, that's one of the reasons we're also up today. I forgot to say this earlier. Moody's had downgraded U.S. banks, and now they're back to stable this morning. So initially they were downgraded, and now they're back to stable. So again, there's a lot of reasons we're up today, but I don't have 100% conviction it's going to fall through. It might. It might. I might change my tune next week. You have to wait and see, all right? And again, trading is something where you do need to be active. You have to read what's happening every day. Every day I get up, and I read the price action. Every day I get up, and I read the daily chart. I read the gap. And I've been doing all of this in the morning in the pre-market, but then I'm honing it down in the one minute and taking trading decisions on quick and fast on the one minute chart. Now, someone had asked about options. So this was one that we did. This was the spy puts. Yeah, this was last week. This is one you could have held until the last day, which I did not, but you could have been made more money. So we did the 400 strikes in the spy, which I sent Tuesday morning at 10.07. Again, you take it when you get in. And I got out of this once I was up, but you could have held this into the last day, and that was an anomaly. Cost was cheap. Again, these, you know, they got priced as the week went on. A dollar seventy-five sold at four seventy-five. You could have made fifteen thousand dollars on a risk of eighty-seven fifty. So this is this is a substantial risk. You can you slice it in two. You can buy one contract, which would be one hundred seventy-five dollars. But the whole point is, you would have made one hundred seventy-one percent return on investment. This is not an exit. That's the best exit, and it wasn't the exit Friday. Okay. And again, I think you need to chunk it out when you take trades too, even if you want to hold stuff, don't hold everything. Okay. Dollar 75 with six contracts profits 1800, 171% return investment again. So let's, this was the seven. So this is the morning and the day at 10 o'clock in the morning that I called the trade. So closed here, gap down, fell off a cliff. Okay. You could have got out here, you could have got out here. Now we did continue here and we did continue here. And again, this was, like I was saying, this was the tent. So here's where I called the 400 puts. We fell into the strike, into it, but look where we went. Take it over. I don't remember what Friday's low was, but it was like, it was under 385, 383 something or whatever. So you could have made more if you held it the last day. But like I said, that was an anomaly. Then we also did the Teslas. This went crazy birds too. Uh, $2.35 was the cost for 35 contracts, which was $82.25. Sold at $6.75. Profit was $15,400. Return on investment was 187%. We did the 185 Teslas. Again, you could have bought one. Could have bought one for and spent $235. All right. And it still was a great trade. This was not the Friday exit. This was crazy. Crazy. Oh, oh shoot. I didn't put Friday in here. I know Friday it was down. It was down at 165 and change on Friday. I know that it was. It was insane. So again, I had called the 185s. It was $20 plus for the strike on Friday. But again, I didn't hold it till there. Um, spy is an index. Yes. It, it, you, I can rate anything and read the directional bias anything that's gapping that has a daily chart. So the answer is yes. Whether it's an ETF or whether it's a stock, it doesn't matter. 
it's I rate the gap based on the daily chart. So anything that trades, I could do that. Again, I always get this question about Forex. Forex only has one close and open a week, so it doesn't pay to trade to trade that or read that. The reality is that the gap happens after the close and then the next day before the open. So I need that close and that open to see the gap. That's where the gap is formulating itself. Do I play the gap in the direction to fill the gap? No, I do not. I do not play that, and that does not work consistently to make money. The reality is that sometimes that works. Where did that work? I'm going to go back here and just show you from uh, SPY. If you went long yesterday to fill this gap, you made money. Did I think that would work? No. Did I know that it might happen? Yes. Was this a good trade? No, in my opinion. Okay. So the reality is that sometimes buying gap fills works or shorting gap fills works. Does it consistently work to make money? Why? No, because you're actually going against what's actually happening. And again, I'm seeing them short here on time. If we have time, I'll go into more detail. But gap fills don't work consistently. And what tends to happen is people think they do. They play them, then they lose money and say, I don't want to do gaps anymore. This is too hard. I don't understand them. You have to understand what you're looking at, okay? So many times I won't do something, like I won't do anything in something that is that I think will reverse. I won't play it. I don't know if that makes any sense. There's days where you do nothing, where something doesn't rate over, to over 20 points and then you won't do it at all. But again, getting back to trading, it's about having a trained eye, a trained eye of learning what to do, okay? So if you train your eye to look at the right thing that's getting bought with institutional money or getting sold off with institutional money, you're going to do well. And again, I tend to focus on the short side. Precision counts, accuracy counts, good money management counts. We talked about that at the beginning in reference to SVB, because the fallout. Because again, you can see how some, a huge institution can collapse with poor money management. So of course it would happen to any individual, okay? It can happen to anyone with any size account, any size money, anywhere. You have to have good money management. And being successful in the market takes detail and a certain level of precision. Detail matters. It can make a difference in you making a lot of money or it can make a difference in you losing and you wanna be successful. Without a good strategy, you'll never make a dime in the market. You just won't. And if you're taking pot shots, following other people and not knowing what they're doing, You'll win some, you'll lose some, but you're never really going to get anywhere. There is a commitment level to, to trading and being successful. When I started out, it took me three years to develop my strategy. I never thought it would take that long, but it was well worth it. And once I started and I was into it, I was all in, okay? Now, I get this question, how much money do you need? Again, with a margin account, you need buying power. You can go to a proper retail trader. If you want to do options, you can have an options account with $2,000, which you have to assess your risk per trade then on the contracts you're doing based on that size of a small account. If you want to take my class, you will learn my method. Where do you open up a trading account? Anywhere you want. You've got to have charts. You have to apply data. You have to have pre and post market data. You have to have a one minute chart. Um, you know, Jeff's coming up. He can talk to you about that. He can talk to you about his charts. There are plenty of places to go to get quality, quality, quality charts. And at the end of the day, if you don't have live data, it's going to be difficult for you to make decisions, particularly, particularly in this type of market where things are moving so fast. I mean, one minute you can be up and the next minute you're not, you know. So you've got to make sure that you book money and profits when you're up as well. But again, it's focusing on the right information, focusing on what to do, and needing a plan of action for booking the money. And again, like I said, it's, it's a nice thing to do for extra money, particularly in this type of environment. Because when you have an environment where you are in levels of inflation, everyone's paying more for everything, you either get a raise at your job or find a way to ex make extra money on the side. A lot of people don't have time for a part-time job. But the nice thing about trading is options. You can put the trade on, put a sell order in, watch it a couple times of the day. You don't have to sit and stare at the screen for six and a half hours. And in reference to day trades, you gotta have one hour in the morning to come and trade in the room and that should not be a big deal, okay? But the right risk to reward trades is, is, is what you need for results. And again, everyone is wants to do well. We want job security. We want security in our deposits at banks. We want to know that things are going to be okay. So you have to calm down, think correctly, put you know, stick your feet in the mud and say, you're going to learn this. You're going to do it. If it takes a little bit longer than you think and costs a little bit more money than you think, as long as you get there, you're going to be fine. Again, stability counts. Stability is important. And knowledge is the key to stability and understanding what to do making correct decisions. So empower yourself today. If you'd like to come, 
If you'd like to trade with me, if you'd like to learn more information, I teach my class. Again, it's a 26 point checklist where I go through and I teach everything I know. It's how I'm able to predict the moves in stock and make accurate predictions in the market. And again, my class is once a month. The class for next weekend is March 25th and 26th. This is a class for March. Uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend. It's a system where you will learn how to enter the stocks, how to exit the stocks, so 26 points. And again, this is the meat and potatoes of what I do, how I day trade and how I do options. It's a class on how to find, pick, and play professional bearish gaps. So it, the class tuition is $69.99. If you're interested, you can email me to sign up. I am doing a special that's going on through the 17th, which is this Friday, for the combo. If you sign up for the combo, which is $74.99, you get the Golden Gap course and the Trends course, which is the 28th. And that will get you, if you sign up by Friday, the trading room free for one year and the options newsletter free for one year, which is invaluable. You get all the trades then for one year, which takes you into March of 2024, which is hard to believe. Um, but it, it's a long time. And then you learn it and you take the class and you do it. Here's some testimonials. I'm going to look and see if there's any other questions. Any other questions from anyone about anything? Uh, let me see. I'm brilliant. Thank you. Anyways, one, one th quick thing. I think I have a few minutes here. I'll just leave this with everyone. Again, it's so important to, to have the right knowledge to make decisions in life, okay? If you have the right knowledge to make decisions, you're going to do well. If you don't, it's a 50-50 crapshoot, not just in your trades, but in anything in life, okay? So, you know, last week there was some scuttlebutt before the bank went under, and some people did get their money out of SVB before it collapsed. Again, no one knew that the Fed was going to come in, take over the bank, and then all of a sudden backstop all insured and unsure, uninsured depositors, over 250000 No one knew that was going to happen. But can you imagine the panic that was happening with people when they were trying to, to, to think that they lost all their money. The reality was that there were so many companies that couldn't make payroll and had accounts with so much money at that bank that the Fed decided to step in. And now, in order to avoid panic in the banking system, the Fed has said that people don't have to worry about that no matter what now. Now, who knows what that means? Who knows if they're going to change the rules? Who knows what's going what's to happen in the next week or so? Again, a lot of this will have to do with next week in the Fed. But when there's downturns in the economy, and if we go into recession, which is not good for anyone, it's not good for individuals, it's not good for businesses, it's not good for anyone at all. It's not good for the value of the dollar. But the fact is that, say we would, it's out of your control. If it's gonna happen, it's out of your control. Whatever the Fed does next week is out of your control. But the decisions that you make about your life are in your control. You may not wanna make them. You may not wanna make the decision to have to change jobs or have to change your spending or have to put something on a credit card or pay more on a credit card because the interest rates are up. You may not want to have to pay for a class to learn how to trade because you think I oh, should be able to figure this out on your own. But it could take you a long time and you might lose money until you do. You may not, things may not happen exactly as you want or exactly as fast as you want, but the reality is you still can make it happen for yourself in the way that you desire if you buckle under and don't complain, don't whine and understand that you're going to take the bull by the horns and you're going to be independent and you're not going to allow these outside circumstances of the world detrimentally affect your life. Because if you get to that point where you will think independently like that, you're going to be so powerful and have so much more at, at, at any given point in time. And you're also going to have a certain peace of mind that you may not have right now where you feel like all these outer circumstances are out of your control and you have no control and you feel like a victim. You are not a victim. You can trade the market even with a small amount of money. Uh, let me just say. Is there a point during a gap situation or circumstance that would indicate to you the trade response to the, yeah, that's the whole point of the of the rating system that I do in the morning in the pre-market, Aaron. That's where I'm looking at the gap and determining whether or not it's going to move up or whether or not it's going to move down. But again, I veer to the short side. Any other last minute questions here? Something else I was going to say and I forgot. Anyways, it's good to diversify. That's another takeaway from SVB. They were too heavily in bonds. So you may say, well, I'm swing trading. Well, maybe you should day trade too because you can capture fast moves in the market and swing trades again may be affected by a lot of volatility about what's going on. Same thing with your retirement accounts. Diversify how you're choosing to take positions in the market. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, okay?
Thanks so much for having me, everybody. Yes, you can understand how to rate the gaps yourself once you do the class, Doug. And, and, and you can email me at melissathestockswish.com for questions. I do that. That's what I teach in the class, Peter. I teach the class how I pick them. And I do pick them myself. It's, it's all me.